I do appreciate the opportunity, Sean Badstone, Sean Badstone the um, superintendent with the Hood Canal School District, could not be with us tonight because he's out presenting this material to uh, some of his constituents. So, um, <clears throat> Pioneer and Hood Canal School Districts have um, put a joint uh, resolution on the ballot um, for February 13th of um, 2018. Um, this conversation uh, for us began uh, about a little over a year ago when we found out that the Shelton School District had put a bond on the ballot and you know as non-high school districts we have capital responsibilities for high school districts and so when we found out in November of 2016 that there was going to be a bond on the ballot we started to have conversation and dialogue about what's possible in our communities and so the work that I'm about to present to you tonight has been uh, you know, well over a year and thought processes between our two districts. So the timeline that's presented to you on page number two, um, we really, uh, the most important piece, I'm going to make this a very uh, quick presentation tonight to keep you folks um, uh, moving quickly, but um, the very, the, the, the most important piece there is last spring, we felt it important between the 10 board members and the two superintendents that we go out and, and poll our constituents around what is it that, how would you like us to respond? And so we asked a, a, th a very simple question, how do you want us to respond? And we had three solutions. One was keep doing what we're doing, which is basically paying non-high annual fees and paying any capital fees that apply to us. Two was annexation. We, we felt it was very important for our tax base to understand that is a viable option and what are the complications around that. And three was build your own high school. And so we went out and started to um, gather information on that very question. And um, shockingly, from the Pioneer School District, as you know, as a neighboring district, we've had our challenges passing bonds in our district. In fact, 17 years and 14 failures before we just, you know, finished the work that we uh, did at our middle school and our elementary schools. So, um, you know, I was shocked, if you go to the next slide, that um, the results came back for our survey significantly higher than I would have anticipated. We had 833 responses between our two districts. That was in-person and online responses. And of that, 72% of the people that spent that time taking that survey or hearing our presentation last spring stated, build, or excuse me, pursue a high school. And so um, that really started to guide our work, which was in May and June of uh, last calendar year. Next slide. So um, our boards put Sean Badstone and myself um, to task around if we're going to build a high school, um, uh, we need to have an innovative high school, one of which has um, its own components that, um, you know, maybe set itself apart from all of the high schools in the state of Washington or Mason County. And so we started to research what was possible there and, and learn as much as we could about the current programs of Mason County and beyond. We uh, targeted then um, this concept of streams, and everybody's heard of STEM, but we want to add the reading component to that, the arts component to that, and most importantly, the service component to the high school, serve, to the high school uh, experience. We also want to, um, recognizing the good work of North Mason and your um, STEM opportunities and Shelton and their STEM opportunities, we really wanted to set ourselves apart with what, what our pathway could be. And, and what, as we were talking to business leaders in our community, what really resonated with us is this opportunity around our industry. And so we really wanted to start honing in on aquaculture and the forest industry to prepare students to work, be work ready in those fields and or college ready in those fields. And so um, our work is really going to be built upon this, these pathways that are possible in a 24 credit comprehensive high school where students can learn more about the field of aquaculture. And when I say aquaculture, it's not the gooey duck farms. It's, it's working with water. It's the importance of water in our communities, whether that be septic design and monitoring, whether it be water tables, whether it be salmon runs. I mean, this is the type of concept that we believe we can create for kids that have that natural uh, levitation towards that field. That 
you know, then if they graduate, they're work ready. They could go right to work for the Taylor shellfishers of the world and or, you know, um, uh, the salmon industry. Or if they wanted to go to a four-year institution, the coursework they've taken is college <coughs> eligible. That's a key part of what we believe um, in what we want to be able to apply to our students. Um, Project-based learning uh, is an important part of that and dual credit opportunities with two and four year uh, opportunities beyond high school. Next slide, comprehensive. Uh, a big question that we get in our community <coughs> is, um, would this be a comprehensive high school? The answer is absolutely yes. We have uh, opportunities in, in the industries that I, uh, I just mentioned. But you know, there will also be that just regular path to go through high school you know, where I can meet the 24 credit requirements. 17 core classes, three personalized learning pathways, and four electives. <coughs> extracurricular activities. Would there be extracurricular activities in this high school? The answer is absolutely yes. Um, that's a deal breaker for our community. I mean, if we couldn't uh, offer uh, extracurricular activities, it would um, not go. And finally, co-curricular, absolutely band, drama, choir, and I'm going to get into that in a little more detail on the next slide. So the next slide really sums it up. The key question coming out of our communities has been, so you think you're large enough to run a high school, can you compete, you know, are you large enough to generate the revenue necessary to offer a variety of program? And the answer is absolutely yes, and this, this demonstrates that. Sizing it up, and what we did was uh, I, I did a, uh, um, I, I collect some information on all the high schools in the state of Washington. And there are 384 high schools in the state of Washington that participate in WIAA activities. And of that 384, I've outlined the difference between the high and the low. The very low, the small tree is the smallest high school in the state of Washington that operates in WIAA classification. It's Oaksdale, and it has 27 students. <coughs> The largest school in our state is South Kitsap with 2,024 students in, in their uh, uh, 9 through 12 or 9 through 11 grades. This school, between our two districts, our 374 non-high kids that come out of Pioneer, 374, and the 150 from Hood Canal would combine for approximately an enrollment of 550 students if every child you know, chose to stay with our with our districts. So between five and 550 students. Where does that put it in that, ra in that ranking of one to 384? Well, it puts you right almost exactly at the 50th percentile. Not quite. If you're a math major, it's the 47th percentile. But it's 203 out of 384 schools. So it, you know, the, the reason why I sum that up is I'm trying to, um, with our community, alleviate this concern that this school would not have enough FTE to generate the re revenue necessary to offer a wide range of programs. And that's absolutely not the case because most funding mechanisms that the state creates are geared towards the average, geared towards that 40th to 60th percentile type schooling. Next slide speaks about the cooperative. Why cooperative? I get asked the question a lot around cooperative and why would we partner with Hood Canal School District? Well, first, um, Hood Canal and Pioneer both uh, feed into primarily Shelton. We send about 27 students to you, not about, exactly 27 this year. Um, most of our students go to Shelton High School and almost all of Hood Canal students go to Shelton High School. So we um, did our research and, and found a provision in the law that allows for a non-high district to go through a process up to two years to determine their future, responding to a high school district and their capital needs. And so um, we started this dialogue and, and determined that um, alone, we may not be able to build a high school that could um, meet all of the demands of 21st century learning. Um, on the Pioneer side, I feel like we have the FTE to, to be able to offer a wide range of programs with 374 high school students. Hood Canal could not do that. But uh, how Hood Canal really helps our district is they can partner with us to help burden or share the cost of a very expensive building. As you know, high schools are not cheap. And so the partnership, I call it kind of, it's kind of a marriage made in heaven, you know, because we both complement one another helping us get through a set of problems that we're exposed to today that potentially could give our tax base long-term solutions. And so we envision um, building a high school for 
you know, between 60 and $70 million. Um, we, we got that number by way of our cost estimator, um, as well as a cost comparison on the work that you did here in North Mason in 20, 2013. Um, we envision a 100,000 square foot facility with a capacity of 750 students. How we get to the $70 million or the 60 to $70 million is Pioneers put a, ballot, or a resolution on the ballot for $30 million. Hook Canal has done the same. And we anticipate between $5 and $10 million of state match. We think we can maximize state match because there is a provision in the law that when you have a cooperative effort, you, you uh, qualify for more state match, up to 90% state matching funds. Um, <clears throat> we're working to secure a, a site location, and you can see on that map, we share a border, the north uh, end of Pioneer, the south end of Hood Canal. We're targeting that area because we feel it makes sense. I mean, if we're going to have a cooperative effort, we need to cut the travel time from Lily Wap and the south end of Harstein Island and make sure we have common space. And so we've, we've um, researched that area. We have a landowner that's willing to have a, 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 a to make an agreement with us, but we're not going to get the cart out ahead of the horse here. We want to make sure that our community wants to validate this effort before we secure the final, the final uh, negotiations for the piece of land. The anticipated revenue, again, uh, with our 550 FTE, we ran the, F, the, the F203X report, which generates $5.6 million of basic debt apportionment, not including SPED, not including local funds, and not including federal funds to operate this high school. So we feel that that's a credible amount of dollars that does not include our local funds that we currently pay to other districts. So um, our projection is the money is there without a new tax of our people to operate our own high school because we're already taxing for our high school costs. And finally, you folks know this better than probably I, Mason County is experiencing growth. And um, we have spent uh, an extraordinary amount of time working with um, the county um, and also city officials around the projected growth. We found in the, in the Mason County Comprehensive Plan, they anticipate 20,000 new residents over the next 20 years. Many of those start at the south end of Belfair and work their way down, you know, across the county towards our uh, service districts. Um, and we feel that, um, you know, with that growth, um, there's going to be a need um, on the south end of Mason County, especially at Shelton High School, where we could alleviate some of that growth expectation in a high school that would be centrally located in Mason County. The next slide speaks to the conceptual drawings. We have hired, hired an architect to help us you know, with some you know, very preliminary conceptual drawings. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time in that. The next slide articulates how, what it's going to cost. Um, Hook Canal School District has a current M&O of $1.72 per thousand. Their current bond, which expires for their building in 2021, is 79 cents. To raise $30 million, they're asking their tax base to consider a $1.36 tax to bring them to an all-in $3.87 cost. Pioneer School District, we have a 209 M&O uh, tax at this point in time. Our current bond is $1.06. We still have about 20 years on that bond. Our cooperative high school to raise $30 million in 30 years is $0.99 cents per thousand to bring us an all-in cost of $4.14. We often get asked, how does that compare to the Shelton School District? And you can see that um, the Shelton numbers apply accordingly, which I feel is a, a key part of you know, some of the, the problem we experience now. Shelton's passage rate of capital improvements well exceed what our, our communities are willing to um, offer. And so we really need to look at potentially long-term solutions for our community. And finally, um, the last page kind of articulates uh, what we feel um, is, is a key consideration. Um, we're currently renting space. When you really think about it, when we pay non-high fees and pay for capital improvements, we're investing in neighboring communities and neighboring um, uh, staffs to educate our students. And that's okay. There's, there's nothing wrong with that model. But um, if we have a desire to invest a little more money up front to own and develop and build equity into our own community, there's an opportunity for us to operate a high school between our two service districts um, that would be um, you know, um, comparable to high schools across the state of Washington. So with that,
I will answer any questions you might, if it's appropriate. Is it appropriate to have it? Okay. Any questions you might have? Well, I don't have a question, but I really, um, I admire your ambition. Mm -hmm. This is a huge project to undertake, it and it concerns two big communities. Yes. So, good it, luck. It, thank you. And it would be, um, we've asked lots of questions and tried to, to look at like kind of a pathway that you know others have blazed for us, and the answer, the, the the response is this has never been done before. School districts work with cooperatives. Mm -hmm. Land and Ritzville have a cooperative agreement, and they work on high school services together, but they've never gone in to build a school and cooperate, and so that's you know it is it is a challenge, um, and uh, you know we'll see where where the chips fall. And you may become the flagship for all the other small, non-high school districts that yeah. want to do the same thing. Potentially, yeah. yeah. We, we hope that, we you hope that become a at consultant. least we start the conversation. <laughs> you can be a consultant. Go make a whole bunch of money. Well, let's not go. <laughs> Any other questions? I got yeah. Um, not, not so much a question, although maybe there's one in there too, but um, a comment. Um, as you heard earlier, I'm a Girl Scout. Huh? I work for the Girl Scouts. Well, in the Hood Canal District, there is also a Girl Scout camp who has a person who is retiring now, that's going to be still living there, who was a former board member, board president at Hood Canal School District. He called me about all this stuff about a year ago, or whatever it was. And uh, you know, he you know, hasn't been on the school board for a while. It's actually Annie, if you know Annie, yes. took his place. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> and, and was asking questions because he's been getting community input, so he says about people concerned and worried about and whatever, you know, mostly about the money and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I just shared with him just the thoughts that I had, and that one of those thoughts I think is worth bringing to your set, your, your, uh, to, to you also, is what it is, and, and uh, by the way, I'm impressed with what you've, the work you've done here, and you, you and your, your people have done here. It Thank um, you. answered some of the things that I even brought up to, to this fellow. But in any case, one of them was, um, what you're doing is, not, is uh, aside from the, the concept, but just to have a brand new high school when you haven't had one before, you're going to have, if you succeed in doing this, you're going to have a whole lot of growing pains and you're going to make some missteps and things are not going to go right, whatever. Yeah. You know, the things that happen when you do something brand new, you're going to make all the mistakes or many of the mistakes and then you'll fix them and that sort of stuff. And I brought that up to him as that would be something that in, you know, he should bring back to, you know, you folks mm -hmm. in, in general um, because you know, you're going to make mistakes, Absolutely. even if you know if you go through it. And uh, so anyway, that that was what I wanted to share, just awesome. uh, for your sake. But otherwise, I, again, I'm very impressed with the work you've done so Thank far. You. Sure. And you know, I, I don't have a problem at all with you guys creating a new high school. Maybe we can play football with you, and hopefully. You can. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. And I forgot to mention, we would actually be a 1A classification. 1A. Yeah, we'd fall in that 1A classification. Be a large 1A. Uh, I think the top end of 1A is near 490 students, and we'd have 408 in the top three, and then three grades if they count. So. Right. We play Shelton. We're not in their classification mm -hmm. every year anyway. But You guys are a 2A classification, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We can play. Oh, yeah. We can schedule a few things. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else to play? I just want to echo the, um, the presentation you put together and the handouts and everything. They're, they're beautiful. You did a really good job. Thank you very much. It's really great. Appreciate it. I'm always encouraged when someone wants to build something. Awesome. We <laughs> certainly, uh, it took a lot of history and a lot of effort, and it seems to me it speaks well of you if you can unify two communities to come together to support education. Mm -hmm. And we feel like it's a, you know, our business plan, our business deal could be, you know, really you think about it, it could be a, you know, I could buy a building for half the cost. Mm -hmm. And um, you know that's a pretty decent business plan on our part. But to, to follow up on the, the learning curve, the learning curve will absolutely be sharp, and hopefully we can lean on you folks and your uh, leadership. You know that uh, is impressive down here in North Mason. That uh, we could learn a lot from your experiences as well. A little different circumstance, you know, starting from scratch. But uh, we feel like with the right leadership, we could um, in the right direction, we can make it work. So. Have to bring, to bring up a. Almost a question. That was where okay. the almost a question thing is. Um, some of what that fellow had talked to me about was you guys potentially creating something different in a high school, and uh, that to me was kind of 
intriguing. What, what would be different? Well, who knows, because you have to create it still. But <coughs> one of those potentials that started occurring to me, and, and I think Dana even talked to me a little bit about this, was, you know, what if you guys created something that draw, would draw kids because of something special you're doing that's different from Shelton, different from North Mason, and then vice versa, some of your kids who aren't interested in that would then go right. elsewhere and stuff like that. In other words, a cooperative kind of, mm -hmm. how would we, how would something like that be created? Is that something even interested, that you guys would be interested in, um, to, to do something so that instead of having a high school for a district, we have maybe several high schools for Mason County that all serve all the kids in some fashion or other. That and that's, and that, it, we've, we've come to that as well. You know, mm -hmm. recognizing the good work you guys work in, you know, in the IT world and, you know, the, the computer development and how Shelton and the healthcare and biotech and, you know, us doing something, you know, around aquaculture. I mean, kids could have, our students could have um, choices across mm -hmm. Mason County to really guide them down the pathway that, that they desire. And um, I feel, as I think you feel, you know, choices like that would be great for our kids. Mm -hmm. um, and um, could be a good opportunity for all. That's great. Again, to me, that's one of the most persuasive things you've said. I mean, I think that would offer an educational package that would make the whole greater than the part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think it would also, the process you're talking about, would certainly raise people's consciousness about education. And I think the people of the state can use some encouragement in that area <laughs> and be willing to pay for what, after all, is our most important investment. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thank you very much thank for your you. time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity.